In today's video, I'll be going over 10 of my favorite text animations. These range from pretty simple to a little bit more difficult, all super useful and can really help you elevate your project. But without further ado, let's hop straight into After Effects and get started. So in After Effects, I've already set up a bunch of compositions, 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second. We're going to be starting at the very first one, which is a text sync animation. This is super simple. There's a couple ways you can go about splitting up the text because that is the first thing that we're going to have to do. You can either use plugins like Text Explode, Decompose Text, which I have here, or Text Exploder. You can also duplicate it and then keep one as a reference and then just delete each wire. But for this case, I'm just gonna select my text and use this plugin. So in this case, I'm just gonna use decompose text and I'm gonna use approximate position without expressions. You can do original position using expressions, but it keeps the whole layer for the words. So it's just a little bit harder to work with in some instances. So generally, I like to put an approximate position and then just line it up myself. I'll turn my reference layer on, which it automatically keeps. You can turn it any color or just decrease the opacity a little bit. And then it's just about lining up the words as best as you can. We can delete the bottom layer, zoom back out so we can see our full thing. So now we have this and usually you'd have an audio layer to go with this, but I'm just going to show you the basics of this animation because you don't need to have an audio layer if you just want the general feel of the animation. So you're going to select all your text layers and just go forward to where you can see everything if you've already cut them up. Then I'm just going to use void, which is just a plugin. You can also just create an all. I just like doing it this way. Just I'm just used to it by now. This is essentially a controller. So I'm just going to rename it. We can move this and it'll move everything. We're going to use this to keep our letters centered. I'm going to turn on my proportional grid. So we get this nice fancy little grid so we can make sure that everything is always centered. I'm going to start off by just cutting these up a little bit just to simulate that there's actually some sort of words being said. Just now if we play back, we have this little look right here. I'm going to go forward to where everything is visible and I'm going to set a keyframe on the position. Then we're going to go, let's set the keyframe right here. And then we're going to go back where that word is no longer visible. So you can see it's right before voice comes in. We are just gonna move it and make sure that it is aligned pretty good. It doesn't need to be perfect, but you want it to look centered. And go back a little bit, set an other keyframe, go back, and then it's just a repeat of that process. Every time you remove a word, you center it back up. There's not much more to it but it looks super clean, especially when you have it synced up to an audio track. Now we can select all our keyframes and I'm just gonna use sexy speed, remove my grid. And then if I play back, you can see we have this little sliding animation, which is just a super simple little look. It looks super clean. It's perfect for the little sentences where you just want to emphasize what's being said a little bit. Let's hop on to the next, which is a text wiggle. This is not so much a uh, transition in, but more so adding a little bit of character to your text. We're gonna do this with our text animator. So I'm gonna open up and where you can see it says text, you have an animate and you're just gonna do a position animator and then you can open that up even more into advanced and then go click add selector and make sure to pick a wiggly selector that's just going to make sure that it is a bit more random in terms of how it moves so if i increase the position you can see it's not just a gradual look so just increase that maybe three by five in this case depends on the size of your composition and your text you can turn off the wiggles per second because we want to have as much control as possible and decrease the correlation now all that's left to do is alt click the random seed and then just do a posterize let's do a three hit enter to go to the next line and then just add a random thousand which is just going to select a number between zero and a thousand and then we have the posterized time to slow it down so now we just get this little bit of a look and you can always go in let's say you want a one by two which is still a little bit more subtle as you can see we just have our characters moving ever so slightly you can go and change the posterized time to let's say 12 instead of three and you can see that it's a little bit faster so use the posterized time to pace the animation i typically go between six and three animation number three is a super cinematic tracking animation and again we're going to be using our text animator so open up your text hit the animate and then do a tracking and all this is going to control is the spacing between each letters for this one you do want to make sure that if you select your text layer and you scroll over into your uh, properties for the text make sure it is center aligned and that is just gonna make sure that the tracking doesn't occur to either the sides, but rather in the center. Anyways, this is gonna start off pretty simple. We're gonna go about, let's say one second forward, set a keyframe for the tracking amount, 
go back to the beginning and just increase that a good bit. We can spice it up a little bit. So if you go back to text at the very top, hit the animate button and then add a scale. Open that up and you can see these little red dots that have occurred at the bottom of the letters. Our letters are going to scale from the bottom. So if you want it to scale from the center of each letter, you can open up your more options up here where you go to the grouping alignment. You can change the placement of the red buttons. Just adjust it by roughly what you think looks like center. So this looks pretty center to me at about minus 43. And then if we scale that down, you can see it scales from the center of the characters. It's not really going to affect anything with our tracking. So that will be just fine. Go back to our one second mark, set a keyframe for the scale, go back to the beginning and set the scale to zero. Now, if we play that back, we have this little animation here. Usually you want it to be a little bit slower, so like a keyframe, drag them out, select them, hit F9 to ease your keyframes. And that just creates a nice little smooth animation here. For the fourth animation, we're gonna be creating a super simple bounce animation. I typically like doing this by taking my text, right clicking on it, and then do a create, create shapes from text. From there, I like to use motion tools, which is a free plugin to extract each shape. So we just have one shape per layer. I'm just going to hit the extract button and that's just going to give us everything like that. Hit the scale, set a keyframe for all of them and drag that out to about one second and then just scale everything down to zero. Select all your keyframes, add a sexy speed, which looks like this, or you can do your own easing by hitting F9 and easing from there. Then we are going to use an expression called inertial bounce. If you don't have it already, it'll be linked down in the description. We are going to all click the stopwatch and paste the expression in there. And then you can right click on where you have applied the expression, copy expression only, and just hit command V on each of these. That is going to give us a nice little bouncy bounce text. You can change the bounciness with these parameters but the bounciness also depends on how your keyframes are eased. So let's say I had no easing at all. You can see how it changes. It gives us just a little bit more bounce at the end. I typically just leave it at the standard and just drag my keyframes in a little bit more if I need to, but that gives me a pretty good bounce. You can see it's very subtle, but it's definitely there. You can always play around with the settings. One thing I do like to do with this type of effect is selecting all the characters, all the letters, all the layers, whatever, using motion tools, offsetting them randomly by a couple frames, sequence that. That's always something fun to play around with, but that is basically it for the bouncy text animation. The fifth animation we're gonna be looking at is a handwriting animation. This works best with a script type font, like the one I have right here, which is the Handsome Pro, which fits me perfectly because I'm both of those things. You don't have to split the layer up into separate layers, but I like to do it just because it gives me more control. So just like with the previous effect, we're gonna right click, create and create shapes from text. and I am going to extract it, which is just a little bit easier to work with in terms of creating my strokes because I don't want to accidentally overlap something. So I'm just going to solo that for now. And then I'm going to use my pen tool and turn off the fill and a stroke is fine. I typically like to work with the red because I don't use red much in my other work. So it's easy to stand out. I just want to follow how it kind of goes. I just want it to be as close to the look of the letter itself. So just make a path. And then I like to just play around with the curves until I have something that looks pretty smooth. And essentially the point behind this is they can then take your E, use the pick whip track mat, set that to the shape. Right now we can see the whole letter, but then if we open up our shape layer, go to contents and then add a trim paths. If we then go ahead and play with it, you can see that it'll animate the text in. So if we set that to zero at the very beginning, go about one second forward, increase that to 100, take your keyframes and hit F9. That's just gonna ease your keyframes, just make it a little bit smoother. Maybe start a little bit faster, something like that. That's pretty good. You can even drag them out a little bit. You don't want it to be too fast either. From there, you can finesse it a little bit more. So let's take it right here. You can see it's a pretty hard cut. So you can go into your shape and in your stroke and the line cap if you just change it to a round cap you can see we get a little bit of a rounded edge to it you can also add a taper which is just going to narrow it down at the beginning or the end so if i take the end length and i just increase that you can see that it will taper in a little bit so playing that back we just get a little bit of a leading line into it but you of course before it ends you want to set a keyframe and then as it ends you want to make sure that you put it back to zero percent so that we get full width of the stroke another way of doing this is by using mask. So if I select my text layer and then I go over, kind of mask out everything, this is not gonna be very pretty. Once you have the whole text set up, you can use a stroke effect, select it to all masks so that it'll read all of these masks. You can either pick stroke sequentially, which is gonna do one mask at a time or everything at once. You can increase the brush size to cover the whole thing. 
the brush hardness, um, play around with these settings. Most importantly is spacing. I set that to zero usually. And then paint style, reveal original image. That is just gonna allow us to play around with this. So if I remove the end, set that to zero. Keyframe it, go forward, let's say two seconds set the end back up to 100. Just like that, we have animated the whole text. So as you can see, it's not as clean as doing it one letter at a time, but it is certainly a, a possibility. It's an option. The next animation is a super sexy text position, character, blur, reveal type thing. I've used it a couple of times. I just think it looks super sick. So I have my text layer set up as per usual. I'm gonna open it up and then in text, I am gonna add an opacity animator and open that up, set that to zero and keyframe the start, go, let's say one second and 12 frames, set that to 100 and we can rename it to opacity just so we don't get lost. And then go back into the text and add a blur animator. This is just gonna give us a little blur thing so we can increase the blur like that. Let's put that to about 15, that'll work pretty good. And then we can go to the very beginning, set a keyframe for the start, go to the end and set that to 100. Now we get this, you can barely see it, but we're gonna take this and scoot it up a couple of frames. And that's just gonna give us a little bit of this blur reveal. Hit you to show my keyframes, select them, add a sexy speed, play that back, and we get this nice little, almost spooky looking text. One way I've spiced it up before is by adding a, an echo effect. Let's do composite and back, set that up to maybe 20 and set that to 0.003, decrease that to maybe 10. And that's just gonna make it look a little bit thicker, which just looks a little bit scarier, if you could even say. Add a deep glow to it if you want. That's just gonna make it look even sexier. Set that to maybe 0.7 and maybe even less, 0.3. And that's just gonna make it look pretty dang sexy. Next up, we have the seventh effect, which is gonna be a 3D spin effect. For this one, you wanna take your layout, right click, create and create shapes from text. You want to make sure that you put it into 3D space and then you want to change it from classic 3D to cinema 4D because we want to extrude our shape. Open up the geometry options and open up the two view mode so we can see what we're doing. We're going to increase the extrusion depth to a good bit. For the anchor point you can hit Y and just move the anchor point to the middle. Another way of doing that is let's say we have this at 80 and then if you hit A, you just set that to half of your extrusion depth. And then we of course want to move this up as well. So if I just click and drag it up, that'll be around halfway. We can stylize this text a little bit. If you go into your layer and then open up the fill and show, you can change the look of it. So let's say we want a, oh, this is a tough one, maybe a yellow colored. So now we've changed the color to yellow, but if we click on the S and then add a side color, we can change the side of only the color. So if we set that to black, for example, we have black sides, but we have a yellow front still, and we will also have a yellow back and we get this super cool looking little we can take this fill paste it to all the other ones and the same with the material options just hit it and paste it if we go in we can again extract all of these so they're on each of their separate layers it's going to make it a little bit easier but we'll have to move the anchor point back so if we hit y we can bring the anchor point and just move it back to 40 which is the center add a rotation so you can move it spin it either way you want to, whatever you really think looks pretty good. We're just gonna do a Y rotation, so keyframe that. Go to about one second, and now this very much depends on which way you like to spin it in. I usually like to go in negative direction, so just negative one. Select all your keyframes, add a sexy speed, go back to one view mode. Make sure this is transparent so we can see what we're doing. I'm just gonna drop it down to third. Playing that back, we get this nice little spin. Take all of these and create a void, which is, again, it's just like a null. It's automatically gonna put it into 3D space like the rest of our layers. Open up the rotation for it by hitting R. Tilt it just ever so slightly. Next up, I'm gonna select all my layers, my original layers. Hit S, and I'm just gonna go forward a little bit, set a keyframe for the scale, go back and set that to zero. Select the keyframes, add six speed using flow set them back at the beginning, select all my layers, U twice to bring up the keyframes, maybe even drag these out a little bit, select all the layers and then just offset them by let's say three. So we have the S coming in first, I'll do this direction, sequence them and then we have a little spin like that. The 
eighth effect is going to be a text flicker animation. I use this a bunch, just I think it looks cool and it's super simple. I'm going to open up my text again. As you can see, we're using the text animators a lot. So, you know, get comfortable with them. You can turn them into presets if you want, but we are going to add a opacity. Once again, we're going to be using one of my favorite things, and that is a wiggly selector. So just click the range selector and add a selector wiggly. Open that up, set the wiggles per second to zero and correlation to zero. Set that to, let's do 40. If I scroll through the random scene, you can see that it's just going to flick on my text a little bit, which is the exact look that we want to do. Again, we're going to all click it and the same expression as we did last time, add a pressurize, let's do six and then random 1000. If you want to animate it, you can hit keyframe the opacity. Let's set that to 20. Move it forward a couple frames. Let's go forward and set that to 100. So playing that back, we have a little flicker animation. Let's do no pressurize time at all, just so you guys can see what that kind of looks like. And that's just going to make it a little bit more aggressive. And then if you add a deep glow and let's just do that 0.5, we have something that looks pretty sick. The ninth animation we're going to be doing is a super simple number counter animation. I have a, a text laid out, which is just 500 and I've picked a mono space font. This is just the nicest type of font you can use for uh, number counters just because it's evenly spaced. I'm going to start by adding a slider control to my layer, open up the text go to source text or click it and then just pick whip it to the slider control. So now you can see it's set at zero and then we can just scale it up as much as we want. Sometimes you might get some weird uh, commas and whatnot. So you can always go in, add a math dot round and then a parentheses and make sure you add a parentheses at the bottom. And that's just going to make sure that if you do have any of those decimals that they're not going to be there. But essentially you can set that to zero. Let's say for example, keyframe the slider and set that to whatever you want the number to be. So let's do 222. So now it's just going to animate. And as you can see, that's where we get the weird numbers. So if we go in at the math dot round parentheses, we no longer get those. So that would be the practical example of that. And that's a, a simple number counter. Last but not least, we have one of the craziest and most funnest text animations that you can go about. It's a bit of a pain in the butt because you can't just replicate it easily. It's very specific to the word and there's a lot of finessing that goes into it. With this effect, you want to start by right clicking on your text, create and create shapes from text and you want to extract each of them. That's just going to make your life a lot easier. The goal here is to make something fun and use the shapes of the letters to create a fun animation. So let's say if we go forward to about three, select all my layers and then search for path and just keyframe all of that. So just click and drag down and then we can hit U to bring up just the keyframes, just to bring it down a little bit to what we want to do. Let's start with the big O for example. You can go back a little bit and then you can take this inner path maybe and scale that up. We'll move it around. So if I drag that down there, just these two kind of fit. So now we have this little animation. Actually, you can, we can move that right here. We can take maybe this inner one, move it out that way, select all of these, ease them, and then you can open up the position right here, keyframe that and move it out. Add some spe sexy speed to that as well. And we'll just cut that layer right where it starts. Let's take maybe the T. We have the paw for that. Move it up. Take that. Stretch it out a little bit. Go back a little bit more. Select. Drag that up. Take these keyframes. Ease them. And that's just going to bring a little bit more life to the animation. One example would be the Framer University logo I made here. Or another text animation I did that was similar to this, which is also just happened to be October as well, like this one. But essentially you can take this and you can make so many fun things with it. It's only your creativity that's going to be the boundary. One thing I focus on a lot with this, like in the Framer University logo, is using momentum and shapes colliding to create more fun. Using the belly of the D to inflate it and bounce back up or with the letter M to bounce up the E and give it some momentum. So it's just about thinking about how letters work together. But without further ado, I just want to say thank you for watching along. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you feel inspired to make something. Please do like, subscribe, comment if you enjoyed. And uh, I'll catch you again next week. Yeah, peace out.